Hi guys and welcome back to Miss Clark Does Science. Last time we talked about how animals and plants can have adaptations to survive in their environments and this time we're going to be moving on to biodiversity, why it's important and how we can conserve it as part of our classification and biodiversity unit which is 2.1 in the biology specification or 4.1 if you're just doing straight up science. Okay, so let's do a nice bright green for this one. Biodiversity then. Biodiversity is the variety of different species and the numbers of individuals within those species in an area. Okay, so we're looking at the number of different species and also the numbers of individuals within those species. So the higher these two numbers, the more biodiverse an area is. And an area can be anything from like a field to a country to a city, anything. Okay, so why is biodiversity important then? So first and foremost, it provides us with food. So we get lots of different types of vegetables for a nice balanced diet. Um, we get different types of lands for different types of animal species for our diet. Ultimately, it provides a diverse food source. Then we have potential foods. We don't know yet whether these foods can contribute to our nutrition and our progression in society. So just the idea of potential foods is important as well. And also, interestingly, industrial materials. Now, you don't often hear about this much, but if you think about it, this over here is a wicker basket and it's made of a plant material that is woven around and it's very sturdy and it lasts for years. So industrial materials can also be made from plants and this idea of biodiversity. And then, you know, some might argue most important maybe is the idea of medicine. So a lot of our medicines come from different plants from around the world. You can look at studies that have gone into rainforests across the world and found cures for certain diseases in plants there. In areas where there's a lot of biodiversity, you often find a lot of treatments there as well. And lastly, but not least, but there's also just general well-being. So being in a biodiverse community has been found to be beneficial for human well-being. It's proven to lower mental health issues in certain areas, just being out in the outdoors, being in with in tune with nature as they call it there's increasing studies in this field really and local councils and areas are looking into this and how they can implement strategies that contribute to biodiversity to help just mankind in general okay guys so you also need to know about how biodiversity can be conserved and by conserved we mean to maintain something in a sustainable way so to limit the human impact on an area so one of the ways that we can do this is by holding a convention on international trade in endangered species. This is an annual event that happens in the US, but scientists from across the world can get involved in this, where they hold lectures, they do public events. It's a big event that is centered around endangered species. Then we have sites of specific scientific interest or SSSIs. And these are usually a bit more local. They are areas that are deemed to hold particular wildlife that need to be protected. Uh, local ones to Cardiff are Rumney Quarry, the Seven Estuary, and even Flatholm Island, which you can go and visit down in the bay. Then there are captive breeding programs. You might have heard of these in some zoos. So up in Scotland, they recently had a baby panda that was born. Um, they do breeding programs in various zoos across the world and they focus on different species, usually endangered species, to try and get them breeding again, even if they're not in the wild. Then we have national parks, so you may have heard of the Lake District, the Peak District, or closer to Wales, there are things like Snowdonia, um, the Brecon Beacons, these are all areas of interest. I think this is one down here. I believe this is Brecon. Then there are seeds and sperm banks. So seeds and sperm so that we can reproduce animals or plants in the future, if even if they go extinct. Uh, one of the most famous ones is Svalbard, I think is in Norway. This is the international s seed bank for the world. There's all sorts of seeds held within here and you can actually send your own samples of seeds to go in here. Uh, there's another video done by another YouTuber that I'll link below that is really interesting on this topic if you are interested. Then there are local and, and finally there are local biodiversity action plans. These are a lot closer to home and they are usually set up by the councils to promote biodiversity within their areas and they have very specific action plans such as planting more trees or clearing up litter. All the litter programs fall under this realm so they tend to be a little bit more local. 
And that's it for this part of the specification. Next time we're going to move on to how we start sampling such areas for biodiversity, specifically looking at something called a quadrat, how we can use these to investigate the abundance of a species in an area. And maybe we'll have a go at answering this question here. How many daisies are there in this picture? And I'll give you a little bit of a hint. We are not going to count them individually.